So hi everyone and welcome to this video on building an autoregressive distributed lag model inside of R. And uh, this code was modified from the creators of the Dynamac package, uh, which we're going to be using to be able to implement this particular model. And uh, we're going to go through the codes and the initial building process in this video. And we're going to talk about the bounds testing in another, in another separate video. Uh, which will uh, be done after this video. So uh, let's begin. So for us to be able to uh, run the model, we need to have the Dynamac package. So if you haven't installed it, click this one. And then we need to load the following packages. So we use the library command to load them. So we'll just load it one by one. Then the first thing we're going to do is we're going to load the data set. Okay, so load the data set. Then uh, let's name our data set DF. And uh, this is a CSV file. So uh, I'm going to choose that CSV file from my files. Uh, all files and the codes will be linked in the description box below. So uh, you, you can just uh, check that one out. And uh, that should be the case. So let's see the data set, head DF. OK. So uh, I think I loaded the wrong data set. So give me a moment, uh, I think. It should be somewhere here. So it should be, uh, oh, it's this one. Okay, there, sorry. So here we have our data set. It contains the output gap, the RRP, which is essentially the policy rate, which is just like an interest rate, and the CPI inflation rate for the Philippines. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to declare the time series variables. So time series variables. Then the time series variables, the way that we're going to do that is um, we're just going to use the ts command. So I'll name a variable y, I'll name an object y rather. And uh, this is the output gap, so df output gap. Then this starts, so the data starts, if you look at this one below, it starts at the year, uh, the year 2000. Then the first month, the first date. Then this is quarterly data, frequency equal to 4. Then you'll see that we create that object. Then we're going to do the same for uh, the other two variables in our system. So let's call RRPI. So this one is RRP. Then that should be that. Then the last one is going to be C, uh, CPI inflation. So let's call it PI. So this one will be uh, CPI. And that should be that. So I think it's useful to plot the data. So uh, let's plot it using the ts underscore plot command. So ts plot, uh, say y. So we're going to plot the output gap. So this is the output gap. Again, this is a plotly base, so you can zoom into the data. I can tell already that I, I think the data is going to be stationary because it just revolves around this up and down movement. So let's see um, the interest rate data. So ts plot of interest rate, which is i. So obviously this one should be non-stationary, uh, trending downward. So the, the policy rate is trending downward over the years, of course, as expected, as most countries are. Uh, then let's see inflation. I, I think this should also be non-stationary. So uh, yeah, so pretty much non-stationary. We can check for stationarity. So we can check for stationarity using uh, a couple of tests. Uh, let's just use the Philips Peron in this in this video so pp test uh, let's do y so if you noticed um y is our output gap so uh we reject the null and the alternative is stationary so the data is stationary whoops is stationary then uh if we do uh for the other pp test i so let's see how that goes so uh as we, we fail to reject the null hypothesis so this one is non-stationary then the last one is uh, inflation. So again, we failed to reject the null hypothesis. So this one is also non-stationary. Okay, let's estimate the ARDL model. So again, an ARDL model is basically you have uh, you explain a particular forecast variable. So in this case, we'll explain the policy rate, which is RRP, right, or the interest rate against. Uh, exogenous factors including the own lags of uh, RRP so it means that we're going to include 
uh, the model is specified in such a way that we're explaining the interest rate, which is RRP, against past values of the interest rate, as well as past values of the output gap and of the CPI. So that's how it's going to be um, formulated. So let's call our model, model 1. Okay, and the way we're going to estimate the model is we're going to use the Dyna ARDL command. So that's going to estimate it. Then we're going to use RRP uh, output put dot gap so our dependent is rp so we line that up first which is explained by the output gap plus the cpi and again this comes from the data set df right so that comes from the data set df then uh we're gonna specify a couple of lags so we'll just list uh lags as we see them we're gonna do formal testing in the next video so let's say i'm gonna include one lag of rp Say uh, I want to include uh, one lag of CPI, so let's include one lag of CPI, and maybe one lag of output gap. Okay, so this is also equal to one. So there's that. Then uh, diffs. So we know that the output gap is already stationary, uh, but the CPI isn't. So we need to state that the CPI isn't. So we need to difference that. So there then we want ec or the error correction to be true because we want rrp to be differenced again because we said that we found out in the phillips Huron test that rrp or i in this case was non-stationary and then let's just say um simulate simulate uh let's just set that to false then this should run so uh we can do we can put the summary of the results so model one okay as this so we can see that in explaining the current value of rrp the first lag of rrp is significant uh, the difference the first lag of cpi is also significant the lag of cpi is also significant but the output gap is not significant in this case so uh we can also test for auto correlation so there's a command dyna uh, uh dyna ardl dot auto correlated then we're going to run that on model one. So we can see that um, in here, uh, there seems to be no autocorrelation because 0 0.08 is greater than 0 0.05, but just barely. And the residuals seem to be normally distributed for the most part. And these were the specific model, uh, model statistics. Again, we're going to do the bounds testing in more procedures in the next video. But uh, this wraps it up for our video, and this is a simple way of how to estimate an autoregressive distributed lag model inside of R. So I'll see you in the next video when we discuss the bounds testing. Thank you for your attention.